What's up, Rockstars? Today I'm going through the five worst rated board games, according to Board Game Geek, that I actually bought. What are they? What are my thoughts about these games? Why did I buy them? Let's go ahead and discuss that right now. Now, first of all, a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. It is through their financial support that I'm able to bring you the honest, raw coverage that I do of the board game industry, whether that's a perhaps unpopular opinion about a certain topic or perhaps a, a review of a high-ranking game like The Witcher that I'll be covering here very soon, or perhaps it's something as simple as a silly top five of this, where I look at the worst games that I've bought and try to figure out why I actually bought those, if I agree with the rating and whatnot. If you enjoy all that kind of coverage and my honest opinion coming out in every one of those videos, not my Walt's opinion, there is a link down below to that. And that's because I don't take any money from any game developer ever, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, if you can't though, that's fine too. A like, a subscribe, a comment saying this video was helpful helps a lot. I make these videos for you guys and I want you guys to enjoy them and get at least something out of them. Come here. Come here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, you guys also wanted to see Sawyer. So here he is. Say hi. Say hi, Sawyer. No, he's gonna look all sheepish. But he's a good boy. He's growing. Aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah, you're a good boy. Anyway, he's going to be hanging out here for a little bit because he wanted to be in, but probably not uh, on my lap. So we'll go and put him down in a... Now we'll get started. All right, now I want to start from the highest rated to the lowest rated. So we're going to go ahead and go and start at number five and end at number one, which will be the lowest rated game I have bought in. Uh, and we'll just talk about them. So some of them are a little like tied, so we'll go ahead and get into it. And I must say, there is a reason I don't give a number for a review. And anytime I do a review, I do 40 plus minutes typically where I talk nuanced about the game mechanics and balance and player counts and component quality and length of the game or rounds or, uh, you know, whether or not you have analysis paralysis or any, like I go in detail and not all of that can be captured into a number. And I can't, like, if I had to explain the difference between a 6.8 and a 6.9 to you, I couldn't. I don't know who could. Um, and I guess, like, if, I don't know, the whole idea of a number confuses me. Like, my favorite game is Conan, right? But sometimes I play Conan so much, I don't want to play it again. It goes from, I don't know, what do you want to put it, a 9, a 10, I don't know, an 11, whatever. And then suddenly it's like, well, not today. I don't want to play that today. So now it's like four, right? Or, or maybe I love games that have problems or like, I guess, why would my gaming group ever pick anything but a nine or a 10? Why would you ever play an eight? Like, hey, I'd love to have a worse experience. Let's play that. Like the whole numbering system makes no sense to me. And the games are so complex and there's so much to it that having a, a, a number to represent all of that, I, I don't think it could. Um, how does 6.9 tell me that the player boards are bad or that there's not a lot of replayability or that, you know, it's actually a fantastic nuance. I don't know. It just, it's silly. Anyway, Fallout by Fantasy Flight Games. 6.9, terrible game. One of the first reviews I did, if you want to see me do a really bad review as a complete noob with like no budget or funding or anything like that, if you want to see what patrons have supplied to this channel, take a look at my Fallout review. Um, it's really old. It's probably really bad. I apologize. I think I've grown as a reviewer and uh, certainly, uh, you know, actually recording stuff too helps as well. So anyway, um, it's a bad game. It, there's five scenarios and it's competitive. This is talking about the, the core game only. Um, when it shouldn't be, the quest system's messed up to where, like, I can talk to a lady and say, hey, you need to, you know, like, uh, find my missing son. And some other person can find the missing son that never even spoke to the lady and complete the quest. And you're like, what? How does it, it doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. Like, it, it, Fantasy Flight Games has a knack for making the 1.0 version of a game a beta test that they... Uh, have people buy and play and then they'll sell you the fix so they did that with rebellion as well with the combat they do it time and time again where they're just like hey let's go ahead and just make this game it's gonna be kind of crap and there's gonna be a lot of problems but people like it anyway because they love ip games so people buy it because it says fallout or star wars or whatever and then people are like oh there's all these issues like that's a great idea thanks for playtesting our game and they'll make the fix and then sell you the game for, as an expansion or a fix for the expansion that's dumb i don't want to buy any more fallout stuff the competitive parts sucks for two reasons second of all there's inherent advantage to some for instance in scenario five there's a lot of 
radioactive area. But if you play as a ghoul, you don't care. You're just walking around free. You know, you know, nobody, nobody cares. So you have a distinct advantage in that scenario. Additionally, there are two different essentially paths you can take or factions you can play for and you secretly choose it. The problem is if you're playing a four player competitive game and you're the only one that picked one of the symbols and all three of the other people picked another one, that's what's going to happen time and time again. You're at an inherent disadvantage before the game even started and without you knowing. And, th and so then you just play the whole game. You're like, well, I guess I, I would rather, and I said this in my review, I, I guess I started a little stronger. I would rather everybody roll a die, a six sided die and put a cup over it and then go play a game that's actually fun for three hours. Come back, reveal it, whoever rolled the highest wins. That's better than Fallout. Fallout is a crappy game and I couldn't even be bothered to finish painting the five freaking minis that are in it. So, uh, bad game. And the fact that this is the highest one is an insult to these other games. Maybe. I guess we'll see. Let's go for number four. Number four is Talisman Kingdom Hearts. I've never played this game. <laughs> <laughs> I did buy it though. I bought it for my daughter. Her and I are, you know, fans of the Kingdom Hearts series and she really loves it and likes all the minis. In fact, here's Sora. I've had him on my desk to paint for a very long time now. Um, that, yeah, we'll see if that happens. I think it'd be fun to paint them. They're decent enough minis and bright colors and all that. It'd be kind of fun. And I've never played Talisman, but it's, I think it's a roll to move and I just, I don't know. It's rated 6.8 here on BGG, so, you know, what, whatever, I guess. Um, <laughs> it, just, it is what it is. Uh, so, anyway, I guess this is Talisman Revised 4th Edition 2, which also sucks, apparently. But Kingdom Hearts, especially. Also, they included, I think, like, Mulan's in there randomly. Like, I don't know why they picked Mulan. That seems random, but whatever. What do I know? Not much, I guess. Uh, yeah, I can't say too much about it because I never played it. Um, I told her, I let her unbox it and everything. I didn't even unbox it for the channel. And I said, you can actually read the rule books and teach me. Mainly because I don't want, I hate reading rule books anyway. I don't want to learn another system. And I would love for her to take that initiative. And she never has. So that's what it is. I bet if I reminded her it exists as a thing, maybe she would. But I'm sure she forgot. Keeping up. And, and you'll notice there might be a lot of IP games in this one. So number three. Number three is Bioshock Infinite, The Siege of Columbia. This is at a 6.7. Um, I, by the way, I didn't really find any, like, really drastically bad ranked games, which just means I buy quality stuff, obviously. I bought this really early on, uh, same with the Fallout 1, in my board game experience. I started out with Descent, got Zombicide, and then back to Massive Darkness, then bought Fallout, and, you know, uh, the, the Spashuk Infinite as well. I bought this as a gift for my wife. She is very much a fan of the Bioshock series, as am I, and even System Shock too. And Bioshock Infinite was a great game as well. Really enjoyed that one. Um, and it looked like a cool game. And honestly, I like it. I'm going to admit, I actually like I don't know what, what the 6.7 is. I don't think it's the best game ever, but it is a lot of fun. Um, I thought it had some really cool card play where you're trying to get different factions to kind of side with you on different things and uh, you could like zip around in the zip line and move your units around and it was kind of a an area control sort of risk style kind of game uh, had r really tiny minis um, but it had minis uh, it has a great I guess I really liked the two player game I would play it again right now uh, the artwork is great in it like it just it's a really good looking game too honestly um the four player version is utter crap. It's the exact same crap that like Rebellion does and a whole bunch of stuff where it's like, here's the whole game and now you can only play half of it. And the other half is for the other player. That's a two player game where you play half of it. You're, you know, that's dumb. You know, it's like, well, you control these units, you can control these units instead of all of them, which is what you do on a two player. It, it's stupid. Four player versions like that. If the review does not mention that a four player version sucks like that, they did you a disservice. That belongs in every review where they do that because that's an important piece of information and people back based off player counts. Player counts matter. Knowing if something's good or solo or not is important to everybody who plans on playing solo. If people plan on playing at a max group of four, they want to know, will it take longer? Do turn orders take too long? You know, all this other, is it kind of too inflated or, you know, chaotic or whatever it might be? Like they, they care. Two player, I actually liked this one. I disagree with this. I think I would have ranked this a 6.798132 mod. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I was going to do math, but I was going to lower it now. But it's only on a, a not a, a, a scale seven. All right. It is time to pick some. This is annoying. It is time to pick two winners for the Into the AM giveaway. Now, I will say before we get into this that 
there is going to be a Memorial Day sale, so you might want to wait on that if you want to uh, capitalize on this. I'll talk more about it when that sale launches, so be on the lookout for that, of course, because you can combine my savings code with that and save a lot of money. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, mention that. But for now, let's go ahead and pick two winners, okay? Because this is when I said I'd do it, so I'm going to do it now. So let's go ahead and pick one. Da, 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 da. Who's it gonna be? Aha! Uh, Mr. 47 The. <laughs> Mr. 47 The. Uh, you are the winner here. Uh, if I get the three shirts for 60 bucks, that's a great use of the $50 gift card. Uh, the Back to Earth looked really cool. Maybe a free a Tree on Life one too. That is a great one. Lots of them look good. Well, you have plenty to pick from now. You're welcome. I'll get that code to you. Uh, any winner, you need to actually email me. I'll post this down. I'll pin this as well. But you need to email that. You can find my email in the About section of my YouTube channel. Go ahead and send me an email. I'll give you further instructions and uh, get you that code. All right, let's go and pick another winner. Uh, I would love to get some teas, like the Clockwork Out. A fantastic choice, one of my favorite. is awesome, but exchange shipping in Canada is a bit pricey. Well, maybe this 50 bucks will help you out. How about that? Even if you get one shirt, it'll be free. I guarantee it. Um, that being said, Canada can't be that bad. You guys got great health care. I'm sure you can get some cool shirts, too. So uh, that'll be awesome as well to Michael Joyce. So again, email me. That'll be in the description below. I'll go ahead and say it though. It's michael at kingofaverage.com. So you can go ahead and email me there. I'll give you further instructions. You can get your gift card. Now, back to the video. Now for number two. Number two is actually technically the first game outside of like Monopoly, Clue, Sorry, Life those kind of style games. The first game I really played that was anything different besides Magic the Gathering. So I had been a fan of Magic the Gathering, um, but I hadn't really played really anything else. Like, like I, I played hand and foot with my parents once and some weird dominoes game. I don't know, like that kind of like old person crap. Like, no, but this, this was kind of the first thing I did, but it didn't wow me enough to get me in that. And that involved my first game, which was a Zombicide a Prison Outbreak. I got... We, I, I was invited and we played that and I was like blown away. I was like, look at this freaking abomination thing and that's my character. It's got machetes and I was freaking out. It was the coolest thing ever. I needed something cool at like that. I'd, K K K Katan would have never had me, you know, join the board game industry. That, that that looks like boring crap. I want cool stuff. It's a great Dal Moody. I, I led that in quite a bit. 6.6. .6. How can it be 6.6 .6 if this guy has a tattoo with a freaking thing? <laughs> Um, we would play this on lunch break, uh, at, uh, my work. I was invited to go play and we would play several rounds. One of the nice things about the Great Dumb Moon is it goes pretty quick, right? And that's kind of nice. It's nice as we go over. It's really funny to always make fun of the peon, right? So the peon's the lowest ranked person there and, uh, like there, they would not give them a chair, so they'd have to stand. And if anybody needed anything, they'd have to go get it for them, right? They weren't allowed to, you know, it's like, ah, I need another drink. And they'd go get another drink and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of actually fun. I, I like the Great Down Moody. It's a, you know, a, a more simplistic uh, kind of party style uh, card game. But, uh, and that was also one of the nice things is a lot of people can play it. That was one of the good things about it at work is we could have, you know, six people there and it would still play just fine, which was also kind of nice. Um, I really liked it. It was kind of cool. I actually did buy a copy, so I guess, but I think I bought it after Zombicide. So I think I still bought it afterwards where I had my own copy, but, because you could actually play it with like a poker set too, I think, and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what a 6.6 .6 is. I don't know if that's terrible or not. I guess maybe that one fits. I don't know. It, it is what it is. It was designed by Richard Garfield. How bad could it be? <laughs> okay. Next up my number one worst ranked game I have ever bought. Which one? Not including like Monopoly and stuff. I don't know, actually. I didn't even look to see how much that is. That is Machi Koro. It is also at a 6.6, .6, so it's kind of a tie with the Great Dumb Moody, but this one's surprising. I really liked Machi Koro. Again, it was one where I was invited to play it at work. This is kind of my beginnings of stuff. And uh, forest rule, that's all I'm saying. Do forest. Roll those fives. Um... <laughs> I don't know why this is 6.6. .6. I'm not sure exactly. Um, one of the nice things I like about it is that you can get stuff on other people's turn. I think that was really important because wait, what I didn't want to do is just be stuck with my rolls because I roll crappy anyway. Another thing is that I didn't want to, um, you know, essentially not care about what was happening outside of my turn. 
right? And so the ability to either have the red cards to take money from people or the uh, green cards to be able to, you know, get it from multiple people or, or blue. I, I always get those mixed up. Anyway, um, was, I think, a smart decision there. I liked the art. It was simple. I got the bright lights uh edition uh it was like a target exclusive i would believe it had a few expansions in there but i've played the regular one as well that's how it started out and i really liked it it's a nice neat little kind of deck building thing and i really like that uh kind of oh i'll buy this and i'll do this and that'll improve my setup here because i'm stealing some here and getting some here and then i double down there and i really like doing kind of uh combos right where i would build essentially to where like almost a winning condition where it's like if i roll this number i'm just waiting for a four if i roll a four i win right i would get like 26 gold or some ridiculous junk like that right and that i always enjoyed kind of doing that as well and uh it was something i could play with my kids something i could play with my uh friends and family so i really liked that one as well so that was kind of again a surprise there but also that means the lowest game i've ever bought is a 6.6 .6. now i don't know if that's good or not i don't know i don't know how low these tend to go i don't pretend to understand the rating system on bgg but uh, that was certainly an interesting thing to do because I put in some of those, like, uh, I put in, like, Dungeonology, and it's like a 7.2 or some junk. I was like, I don't know, really? I don't know. Who would raise, you know, what? <laughs> um, or the fact that Fallout was, was ranked 6.9. Now, either those are huge fanboys, in which case, knock it off, those, this game's crap, or... <laughs> Or they, because I, a, a bl uh, you can be blind to some issues if you really like the IP. I'm probably that way with Star Wars Rebellion, because I never had a problem with the combat, um, at least in my newbie state of playing board games I didn't at the time. Without the expansion, because I don't care about Rogue One stuff either. I like the, the classical stuff. Anyway, um, or they're rating it, but they are actually rating it based off of the co-op uh, expansion that they sold you to fix this crappy version of it and maybe they're saying i played that i'm going to rank fallout 6.9 um or maybe they're drunk i don't know i don't know i was really surprised this because this was probably my most hated one of this list now i could do another list of my most hated ones of my highest ranked games um or the ones i disliked the most or something like that i could do that um, for instance, I could guarantee uh, at least two that I think would be on there. So that might be kind of interesting. Um, but maybe we'll save that for another video. Anyway, that's the video. That's that's kind of what I wanted to just have a fun time sharing through. I would love to see your list. And I would love to know why you bought them. A lot of this, this was a gift. This was a gift. This was a gift. I was new to things. I don't know why this is on here. I actually like this one. So, so it could be something like that. Um, I would love to hear your reasoning for it. Were you just new to the thing? I think when we first start out, we have to figure out what clicks for us, right? What do I like in a board game or what don't I like in a board game? So that you can then see like, oh, I know I'll love that or, oh, I know that'll be an issue for me and I won't like that. So you get a few duds and I think that's how you learn, right? That's how you figure out, oh, I really disliked this game. And here's why. And so if I ever see that in another game again, I know to avoid it, right? So I think it could be uh, a little bit of that as well, because a lot of the, every single one of these was one of the first ones I got, except for Talisman Kingdom Hearts. I think I bought it for her two years ago. Yes, two Christmases ago, I got this for her. I think either her birthday. I can't remember which. Anyway. I would love to see your list. Go and let me know in the comments below, and I will take a look at them. And maybe I'll critique your list, too. I don't know. It'll be, be kind of interesting to, to see. That's it. That's all I had for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again really soon. Bye.